Psalms 136. Psalms 135, we did praise you the Lord. Now we turn over, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. We're to thank God. We used to recognize one day out of the year to thank the Lord, but we don't do that no more. In everything give thanks, Paul, I believe, says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. There is none good but God, for his mercy endureth forever. No. <laughs> Excuse me. I remember, for his mercy endureth forever, which we see in this chapter, used to be a chant in the Roman Catholic Church. I don't remember completely if the, if the priest would read exactly what, I don't know. What it would, what he would read to, I, but I remember we would say, "His mercy endureth forever." And you know what? With the Roman Catholic system that I grew up in, most did not have mercy because they believed upon Mary or the popes. His mercy endureth forever. I don't know if you know what that means. When we get through this chapter, everything. Each one has a specific point, and we'll look at it in a few minutes. His mercy endure forever. I mean, the definition of mercy is to overlook injuries or a uh, treat an offender better than he de deserves. To forgive trespasses. His mercy endures forever. Is I am not going to hell. I deserve hell. By my sins, except for the fact that it's Isaiah 53 and that Christ died for my sins, it is my works that would put me into hell. Christ's works, Christ the gospel, what he did upon Calvary is the only reason why I am saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So give thanks to the Lord, his mercy endures forever. I am not ever going to go to hell. I am never going to be a turned away from God. I better thank God for that. And I better realize when I got troubles and problems in my life, I better give thanks to God. Because I'm not going to hell. Oh, give thanks unto the, unto the God of gods. And we saw that yesterday, 135.5. There are gods. And God, the Holy Spirit, acknowledges God's. Matter of fact, he will give you some names of some of the gods that Israel gets involved in. And never mind all the gods that are out there. There are tons of gods. When you get into Greek and Roman mythology and Babylonian and Egyptian. Do you realize each one, of, we're going to read that in a few minutes, each one of those plagues upon Egypt was God attacking an Egyptian God? His mercy endured forever. Well, what, what is the mercy endured forever? God is the conquer, conqueror of all the fallen gods. All those gods are really one God, Satan. This transformed into something what the people wanted. And if you look at the gods' worship and, and the, the idolatry and all the, the, the teachings of the gods, Romans, Babylon, whatever it is, it's usually a sex worship. Followed by eat and drink and being merry. But we have a God that's above all gods. His mercy endureth forever. Oh, good thanks to the Lord of Lords. That's one, that's a title of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 1, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Verse 2, capital G-O-D. And then you get thanks to the Lord of Lords. That's the title you find upon the vestment of Jesus Christ. Don't tell me Jesus is not God and God is not Jesus. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords. His mercy endureth forever. You wait for that Jew to be in sale of the at the end of the tribulation period when that Man on that horse, that Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, comes with a vesture that says, King of kings and Lord of lords. Boy, you better be shouting that Israel be shouting his mercy endured forever. Because at that point, Israel will be established as a nation. They'll be regathered from all the nations and gathered to their homeland 
under the Lord Jesus Christ. And from then, the mercy will be for the Jews. There will be no more missiles being fired. There will be no more Middle East countries. There will be no more Palestinians. There will be no more nations that are against the Jew. His mercy endureth forever. Amen. You wait till they get that new earth. You think you're going to have Arabs there? You think they're going to have maps of a place with no Jerusalem, no Israel name on them? You better believe not. Be forever settled. Number verse four to him who alone doeth great wonders for his mercy endureth forever. He does great wonders. And we're going to read by wisdom he made the heaven. All God has to do is turn off the water. That's a great wonder. It says in the tribulation period that in, in, in the Egypt time, you turn the water into blood. And you're not going to be able to drink that. And all the other great wonders. And we have sun and we have night time. How a plant grows up from a little tiny seed and will uh, feed you. His mercy endure forever. To him, God, that by wisdom... Made the heavens. His mercy endureth forever. The creator, not evolution. Not the Big Bang. That creator has shown us mercy. Again, mercy is to overlook injuries or to treat an offender. I'm an offender better than he deserves. To forgive trespasses. The God that made all those stars out there that we can't count and that he calls by name says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his mercy endured forever. That's the same God that made Saturn with the rings. To him, God that stretches out the earth above the water. The planet that we live on, of all the planets of the planets that could sustain life in every way, you know, NASA's wasting money trying to find life. There is no life anywhere else but here on this miserable, rotten, sin cursed planet. The God that made everything that, to supply man and animals' needs, the Creator that made us, for His mercy endure forever. Man's the one that's polluting it. To him that made great lights. We're going to, next verse we'll see what those lights are. For his mercy endureth forever. The sun to rule by day. Without the sun we would not have life. And God so wonderful that his mercy endureth forever. In his creation he made the plants before he made the sun. So if you say, you know, those each of those days is a thousand years. Well, how did a plant survive? That sun keeps coming up every morning like God said it would until time will end on this planet. And that is mercy that the sun comes up that a bunch of idiots go out there and, and get naked and, and, and worship the Baal. That's not what that sun is there for. The sun is for seasons, for life, for, for plants. You get vitamin D. You get nutrients from that sun. Too much. Is not good for you. The moon and stars are ruled by night. Now you got to remember when you're reading the Old Testament, there are no fluorescent light bulbs. There are no light bulbs at all. There's no electricity. So if you are in the middle of uh, Palestine, the land, the, the land of Canaan, anywhere in the world, at this time. If there was no moon and stars, you'd be completely in the dark outside of lightning bugs. Do you realize that? If God did not make the moon and the stars, you wouldn't be able to see your hand in front of your face. Till the sun came back in the morning. And you got to realize when the times that there was no moon, 
or when the stars were blocked because of cloudy, you didn't see anything. There was no light. So when you look at that moon that, that God says given by him, the creator, the, the signs, the seasons, and all that, his mercy endureth that you got light in the middle of the night. And that moon can uh, uh, affect crop growth. According to Paul Richards, uh, all of that, there are certain times you plant certain uh, seeds and plants. You can dig a hole. You don't dig a hole. All by the moon. The tides are by the moon. That moon just isn't just a circle that goes around the planet. It has a function. His mercy endure forever. Now the Bible says that the moon one day will be changed into blood. I don't know what that's going to have an effect on this on this planet. But next time there's a full moon, you're holding hands with your with your loved one. Remember the Lord's mercy endures forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn. Well, you're talking about God who killed every firstborn, including the beast. Why would his mercy endure forever? Because the book is Jewish. We are looking at the nation of Israel. Had not the mercy of God endured forever, they'd be stewing Egypt as slaves. It broke Pharaoh that God had to kill the firstborns of everybody. The following is wake up in the middle of the night with the cries of, of death and say, Get out of here! That was the mercy of God upon his people. Had God not done that, they'd still be there in Egypt. And brought out Israel from among them. See? Remember, Moses and Aaron told Pharaoh and prophesied before them, before each judgment, what God wanted for them to do. And don't you go, oh, God killed all those babies. God killed all those animals. God killed all the trees. No. Pharaoh had opportunity to get right. And the apple of God's eye is Israel. They could have been saved with Israel. His mercy endures for Israel because Israel did what God told them to do. When Moses came to him and said, I want you to kill a lamb for your household. I want you to sprinkle the blood on three specific spots. They did what God told them to do. Egypt's the one that didn't do what God told him to do because they were the firstborn killed. God said, listen, if I see the blood, I will pass over you. The deaf cry that cried that night were people who did not do what God told you, told them to do. So the mercy endured forever is that they did not listen to God compared to those that did listen to God. There's a mercy indeed. Listen, you know what the Bible says? What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. His mercy endureth forever. I do. I did what God told me to do. There's going to be plenty of people who don't do it. <coughs> with a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, his mercy endureth forever. God's hand let him out. Out of Egypt. How do you know that? Because look at the next event. To him that divided the Red Sea into parts. What is his mercy endured forever in that point? Pharaoh was right behind him. He had second thoughts. He wanted to go get him. He wanted to go kill him. He wanted to destroy them. Had God not opened up that Red Sea, Israel would have been killed. And because the sea opened up. God's mercy to Israel. Isn't it funny? Remember I said that I remember as a little boy in a Catholic church saying, His mercy endured forever. His mercy endured forever. Whatever you would say. I don't know if he would have called the Bible. I was too young to know. But we didn't have a Bible when we went to Catholic. But His mercy endured forever. I remember that chant in the Roman Catholic church. And as we read it, the subject is Jewish, not Gentile. 
When you say his mercy endured forever, you are talking about the nation of Israel. Not unsaved Gentiles. Unless you want to steal that title from the Jews and say God is all done with them and look at our church and look at who we are as a religion. We are the new, you know, the new Israel. Do you know that's what they called America when it was first founded? By the pilgrims or that? When they, set up, when they actually set up the, the congregational church, they called it the new, the new Israel, the new Jerusalem. I forget which one. You know, they stole the promises of the Jew right out of the Old Testament and put it right down on themselves. That's wrong. Because you guys say God's all done with the Jew to do that. And he's not. He's angry with them right now. And you know what? His mercy endures forever because he's going to give them Jacob's trouble. Then he's going to give them a way out. The Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Some to eternal damnation and some to glory that his mercy endured forever. And made Israel pass through the midst of it for his mercy endured forever. He gave Israel a dry path to walk on the bottom of a sea floor. Who has been wet in how many years, decades, was dry and made them able. Listen, he could have closed those waters on Israel if he wanted to. What, what stopped him? What stopped him from drowning Israel and not just drowning the Egyptian? His mercy endured forever. But overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea, for his mercy endured forever. Oh, poor Pharaoh. The mean, nasty God killed Pharaoh and all his men. Yeah, but... He was wicked. He was wicked, and he did not take no heed to the word of God. So what you see in Pharaoh, his mercy endured forever. That he protected Israel. He could let Pharaoh and his army go all the way through too, and chase Israel all the way to the promised land. But he didn't. He killed Pharaoh because Pharaoh would not do what God told him to do and protected Israel. To him which led his people through the wilderness. Now there is a, uh, you, you ought to mark, the Jews ought to mark this, capitalize for his mercy and dirt for Aaron. Because you ever read the troubles and problems that happened in that wilderness? We're thirsty. We're hungry. Moses, who do you think you're doing? I think I should be in the prison. You know, if you read numbers and that wilderness journey and all that, the 40 years, you're lucky that Moses didn't get to the promised land, turn around and say, where the heck did everybody go? Where's all this, where'd all these ashes come from? It's a wonder that they made it to the promised land. And you say, well, how can you say that? When they got into the promised land, what happened? They did not listen to God. They did not kill all the people they were supposed to kill. And God still loves them. How much is God's mercy towards us that his mercy endures forever? We never do what God tells, them, tells us to do. But yet he still loves us. And yet by the Lord Jesus Christ, we are saved and we are adopted into the family by the Holy Spirit and dwelling in us. That when we are still wicked, we're still sinners, we're still in rebellion, God still loves us. His mercy endures forever. I don't do everything that God tells me to do. Plain and simple. Neither did Israel. For his mercy endured forever. How do you like that one? To him which smote great kings. And you say, for his mercy endured forever. You talk about kings. These were sinful kings that would not listen. You got a nation that, that, that has rules and regulations that you can go ahead and kill your children or give up your children to any need, any problem, and just, just give them up and break up any marriage and stuff like that. 
Do you want them world leaders in heaven with you when you go to heaven? It's a sin condition. It is wickedness. It is sin. The wages of sin is death. They would not listen to God. And even Moses would go into some of the land and say, Listen, could we just have water and food? We'll go on our way. And no. And God told Abraham, Them that curse you, I'm going to curse. And them that bless you, I will bless. There was one nation. that said, You know what? We fear that God. We're going to go over there. We're going to deceive them. But... We fear that God. There was one city that Joshua came to and one woman feared God. Didn't God spare Rahab, the harlot? But he killed all these kings. Why? Rahab did and loved the Lord enough to fear him. What's the Bible say about the fear of God? We'll study that through Proverbs. His mercy endures for it. It's not just killing kings. They're wicked kings. Shihon, the king of the Amorites, for his mercy endures forever. What would he have done if God did not kill him? Did not allow Israel to kill him? You know, these are cruel people we're reading about right now. The Bible speaks about they would rip up women with children. They, they, there's one place in the Bible, I believe it's Psalms, that said they would take the children and smash them against the rocks below. They, they would eat their own children. They would sacrifice their own children. Are you telling me that you would love a religion person that would that would strap a bomb onto their child and send them into somewhere to blow themselves up for a name of a god? You you tell me you you appreciate somebody like that? You wouldn't want God to step in? Well, a tsunami in Japan. That you know how many people in Japan don't worship God and don't do what God's supposed to do? You don't know. I don't know. Ask a missionary and find out what their sins are over there. And look what's happening to America now for her sins. It's mercy to God's people and not to the wicked. There is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Verse two, oh, look at that verse 20. And Og, there's that gut Og again. What did I say yesterday? I said 20, where is it? 22 times that guy's mentioned in the Bible. And Og, the king of Bashan, for his mercy endured forever. That's the guy I believe had the bedstead. The iron bedstead, it was, it was big. He didn't have a king or queen besides bedstead. He had an Og. I mean, it's Og. What is so important about Og that he is mentioned 22 times in the Bible? We're told more, a little more information about Og than we are told about Joseph, the husband of Mary. For his mercy endured forever. So killing Og was a merciful act to Israel. Sometimes death is a merciful act by God. I don't care if the I don't care if it's a child five years old or grandma that's ninety nine years old. The wages of sin is death, but when God takes a life early, you don't know what God knows. I've known of preachers that they get started in the ministry, they, they get a church going, and then they die. And you say, Lord, what? You don't know what. For <clears throat> a child that dies early, you blame God. God knows something about that child that he had to take early.
Or maybe a sin condition like David and Bathsheba with their baby. There's a lot of things that you don't know. Sometimes death is a merciful act by God. Had these kings, kings survived, they would never, there would be no Israel. One day all the all the Philistines are going to be killed over there in Palestine in, in the Middle East. All the Arabians will be dead one day. God's mercy endured forever and Israel will be on top. God's mercy endures forever. And gave their lands, the kings, for inheritance. Inheritance passed by an estero. These lands were given to the nation of Israel to be their lands. They won by battle conflict. You know what you would do today if this was going on when you had a war? In about, you would give the enemy back to the, uh, the land back to the enemy and you would pay for them to rebuild. December 7th, 1941, Japanese declared war in America by attacking Pearl Harbor and continuing to battle with us in the war of the Pacific. And when the battle was over and they surrendered on the uh, USS Missouri, America should have taken ownership of Japan as a war. No, we give them the land and then we fixed all their land up and helped them out. And Hayatachi and, and uh, uh, Honda and uh, all the Japanese products that you buy, you find an electric field with their names on it, were names of cities that were bombed and were targets of the Air Force and the Navy. In the Bible, if you conquer land in war, it is your land. We think we do things so stupidly. You know how we would we would keep Iraq from, from problems and situations? We went over there, we kicked their butt, we won in battle. It is our land now. Shut up, you're under American rules. You don't like it? Get out. No, we, we go over there, we, we spend our military men and we and our military women, we kill them and they give up their family and their time and all that to be over there to fight and we turn it over to another idiot who's not going to do the, the likelihood of all the people and all that and then we go away and, oh, why is there more problems? You put the, you kept the enemy in charge. That's like going to... You got a chicken, and it, it has been caught by an animal, and, it, and the animal's trying to eat the chicken. You pull the chicken out, and, and you you get rid of the animal, and, and you got that chicken. You say, oh, poor chicken. Oh, we got victory. And here, Mr. Chicken, I'm going to turn you over to a pit bull. All right, there you go. Where did my chicken go? You didn't protect the chicken. You just turned them over to another enemy. You know how God took care of Israel? Kill them. Kill them. Kill them. It is your land. Get the wickedness in. Get the idolatry out. Get the, the, the gods out. Get the heathen that, that love them gods. Get them out. You know how you know it didn't it did not work? Because Solomon one day said, Honey, I worship your God. I love you so much. Let me build the temple to this God. Oh, I love you too, my dear. Let me build your God up. That's what happened. Because they did not destroy the gods. They did not destroy the people. They did not destroy the women. They did not destroy the men. And Solomon loved all the women of all the gods. And that is the last you read about Solomon worshiping all those false gods. God's mercy endures forever that you kill them and you get rid of them. You know what our Constitution says? It says we're going to allow all religions to do what they're supposed to do. Okay, however you think, why do we got problems in this country as we do now? Why is it on, on September 11th a bunch of nice, 
good old people with a good old religion got in four airplanes, just wonderfully happy little religious people, and destroyed American lives. Aren't they just so wonderful and great? The Constitution says they have a right to do what they want to do, and they got a right to, you know, have to be read Melinda lights and, and have to be, have to get, get a, a lawyer appointed for them if they're not able to afford a lawyer. The people of America can, can buy your lawyer for you. Ooh, isn't that so good? Uh, that's what your Constitution says. Constitution has the right for, for a religion to go door to door, your neighbors and, and your people of your hometown that you don't want to do, to tell them about a false God and a false uh, gospel and a false spirit, but you don't want to do it. We should have had a constitution in this, in this country to name God and Jesus Christ. If you don't like him, you don't like his word, get out and go start your own country. We wouldn't be having the problems we would be having today if, if that's what the constitution said. There's no God and Jesus Christ in the constitution. That's the problem. Now you tell me about the founding fathers and how they felt about it. They didn't even mention God once. For the people of the uh, oh yeah, more people than God. Glad to see in church age rights for the people. Even the heritage of Israel, his servant, his mercy endured forever. It is Israel's land. I don't care what problem you have. I don't care what the United Nuts say. It is Israel's land. They want it. And they were given to it by the God, the creator that we've been doing. And, you know, that made the heavens. You know, the God that made the heavens, the God that stretched out the earth, the God that gave the great lights, the God that gave us the sun, the God that gave us the moon, the God that defeated Egypt, the God that protected them along the way, the one that got them away from Egypt, that walked through them in the wilderness, the one that conquered these kings, says his land is Israel's land. His mercy endureth forever to his people. Leave them alone. Or you're going, the whole chapter tells you you better leave those people alone. Those are God's people. And if you don't leave them alone, face the consequences. If not on this earth, at the great white throne judgment. Who remembered us in our lowest state? Who who were they? They were just slaves down in Egypt. You know how many different slaves the Egyptians probably had? Probably didn't just have the children of Israel. They probably had other people there too. I assume. Because you know Egypt and Africa are known for slaves. You do know that. You do know that the Africans put Africans on the boat to come to America to be slaves. You do know that, right? You do know history. You do know it's recorded in the Bible that there was a slavery. They were black people of Africa enslaving God's people, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You do know that. How can we don't ever hear of no Jewish rise and no king coming up and dreams for the Jewish people? Doesn't Jeremiah say the prophet that has a dream, let him say the dream? What, what the man that has the word, let him say the word. What is the wheat to the chest? Isn't there, I have a dream, I have a dream. That's in Jeremiah. Where's a Jewish guy coming up and, and fighting all racial battles and conquering all barriers that Jews may be free. Oh, there was one. His name was Moses. He was under God. Moses did everything God told him to do. Moses did it in a proper, orderly fashion by God. And that other guy, King, came up in America. And behind him was a trail of insurance payments being paid for, for looting, for Windows being bashed for cars being burned and alcohol and 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 look where the where the black person is in America today. He ain't free. He's still paying the same taxes as a white man. 
These two fighting for the same job that's not out there. And Israel is still Israel, and they are loved by God. They are the apple of God's eye, even though they are against his Christ. But yet, his mercy endures forever. You know, Israel is in the lowest state today. You really want to put a Jew down? I mean, do it right, trying to witness it. Say, listen, what does the Bible say about the men of, of, of your people? What does the law say? We're supposed to go to Jerusalem three times a year. Do you? No. Why not? They don't obey the law, but they're still God's people. They are rebelling against God, but yet his mercy endures forever. And has redeemed us from our enemies. Bought back. You know how God bought Israel back? It took a lamb's blood. And it took all the blood of the firstborn in Egypt. And later on God said, listen. Everything that opens the matrix, every firstborn is mine. Instead of taking that, you know, you're not going to sacrifice your child. I'm going to take the Levites. And you're going to give an estimation, I forget, it was, a, it was a coin that you were to give. I don't want blood. I don't want you sacrificing your children. Even though they do that later. And then, I believe right at that point, the Levites are numbered. It would, would probably give you how many people in Egypt were killed. God has redeemed me from the enemy, not enemies, the enemy, from Satan and death and hell. They're all one. God made hell for Satan and his angels. It wasn't for Satan who was a liar and a murderer, we wouldn't have death. I have got victory over death, over Satan. And over hell by Jesus Christ his mercy endured forever I am never going to go to hell I am never gonna make my abode with Satan in hell I will never die absent from the body present with the Lord or the trump blow those that remain shall be caught up with those that were going on before me his mercy endureth forever he's going to redeem them again under the Antichrist he redeemed them over Egypt. He redeemed them over Babylon. He's going to redeem them over the Antichrist. His mercy endures forever. Who giveth food to all flesh. Save lost man and animal. For his mercy endured for it. So really you are not to punish your child by not having given them food. God, Jesus said it, it, God makes the rain on the just and the unjust. Well, rain gives us food. Crops. Imagine a man who's going to stand before God and say, I, I'm an atheist. I didn't believe in you. And how many of my hamburgers did you have? How many of my corn on the cob did you have? Well, I don't know. Oh, come on. You're really going to believe that that corn on the cob and the butter and the salt that went with it and the water that you cooked it in, the fire that, that you cooked it under, and the, and the metal that came to make the pots and pans for you to do all that. And, I mean, and the fact is you could eat it with your teeth and, and then, you know, it digests through your body and all the vitamins go out. And then you have a way to relieve yourself and stuff like that. You trying to tell me that happened from nothing? What do you mean, Lord? Well, that's that was evolution. You know, everything to eat a piece of corn on cob and grow a piece of corn on cob, everything defies evolution. Evolution is full of missing links. It would be great. Here's a, here's a corn on a cob. Enjoy it. But I'm not going to give you teeth to do, do it. 
I'm not going. I'm not going to give you a stomach to digest it. Oh, I'm not going to give you no rain for it to grow. You can plant all the seeds you want. I'm not going to have no rain. God's merciful to all, and God's merciful in all giving you food. Just food. Never mind anything else. You could be dead broke in, a, in the middle of a desert somewhere in any part of the world and have nothing but uh, have a bean to eat that came from God. And you reject that God that gave you that bean, you're going to be held accountable. Never mind all the food that is wasted. Who giveth food to all flesh for his mercy endure forever. Oh, give thanks unto God of the heaven, of heaven. Oh, they close it off. For his mercy endureth forever. By the way, to close all this chapter up, the Creator, give him thanks. Violate science. Violate social studies. And it's all 100% Jewish. It is history of Jewish again. And those Jewish people are to go to God and proclaim his mercy endure forever. Because as a race of people, they're the longest living race of people. There are no Babylonians anymore. They're gone. But the Jews are on top. Babylon came in and destroyed Jerusalem. But the Jews are still on top. The Palestinians are not going to get rid of Israel. Israel will still be on top. Even with those missiles flying overhead right now, the Jews should be saying, for his mercy endured forever. Here we are. Even though the Antichrist is going to be chasing them, his mercy endures forever. And then when the Lord Jesus Christ comes, the Lord of Lords, the King of Woo! His mercy endures forever. Let's go for a horseback ride. And then when Jesus Christ puts all the nations down that rejected the Jews, his mercy endures forever. And when Jesus Christ walks over Jerusalem and sits down in David's seat, his throne, those Jews better be very saying, his mercy endures forever. And when the heavens are folded up, the earth is gone and burnt with fervent heat, and, and judgment has passed, and there they are in the new earth, his mercy endures forever. There is record. Jesus said, heaven and earth may pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Psalms 135, or 136, excuse me, will be there. And the continual song that may be sung by the Jews when they come to Jesus is, is they may sing. Remember Psalms is your songbook. Can you, can you picture the day when all the Jews will be singing Psalm 136 in unison, without sin, a, a royal heavenly voice, and maybe we'll join in. Can you imagine if you were to put some more uh, verses in here about the Lord Jesus Christ? What a day that would be to be rejoicing with the Jews over the same Messiah, same Savior, eternity. Sin is gone, Satan is gone, and we are pure, we're without pain, we got a great voice, and we're going to give it all to God. And what can you say? What would be the last words you could ever speak in glory? For his mercy endures forever. That's the testimony of God. His mercy endures forever. We don't deserve his, his love. We don't deserve his care. We don't deserve him taking care of. Never mind giving everybody food. We don't deserve it. And by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, his mercy endureth forever. When I look upon the marks of his hands and his feet and his side, his mercy endureth forever. When I am sitting in Jeru New Jerusalem before Jesus, my Savior, and there is no time in, in eternity, but I've been there uh, all, make up my own word for time, it will be always 
His mercy endureth forever. And when those Jews come into the gates, one of the twelve gates, and that's it, His mercy endureth forever. God's testimony is His mercy endureth forever. What about those that go to hell? You didn't do what God told you to do. You were in rebellion. But all those that did obey God and did do what he told them to do, his mercy endureth forever. Everlasting words. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars. I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart, then I shall bow. In humble adoration.